Hello everybody, welcome to another video. I'm here in Playa del Carmen still and uh, I have a flight to Colombia today actually <laughs> because my visa is about to expire here in Mexico, my tourist visa, temporary visa. Uh, I was considering uh, getting a four-year temporary resident visa uh, for $900 but I wasn't ready to do that so instead I got a flight um, to Colombia to go there and film some stuff and then come back here. I'm gonna be tired, it's 8 something in the morning. So this time I'm actually only bringing a little backpack since I'm uh, coming back and I'm on my way to the bus terminal in Playa del Carmen. I was starting to get a bit anxious actually since I've been here now for a bit of time and uh, I haven't done much. I've just been going to the gym and uh, yeah I get this feeling like I uh, it's like some kind of feeling of frustration, like I have to go somewhere, I have to travel somewhere. Now I feel good again, <laughs> since I'm on my way. But it's really strange, I don't know why I have that feeling. I just can't relax when I stay in one place for too long. So this time I have maybe five pounds in my bag, <laughs> but I'm not gonna stay for that long just a little backpack. It's so nice when you have almost nothing, almost no stuff at all. I did a trip um, a couple of years ago around in Southeast Asia and I think I had about 14 pounds or so, maybe even less, like six, seven kilos. That's all I had with me. That was one of the best trips I've had. I had a little backpack like this, like two pair of shorts, two t-shirts and I was gone for six months, just traveled around all over um, Southeast Asia. It's so nice when we have not so much stuff. Way better than when we have too many things in life. So the reason why I'm going to Colombia is to uh, renew my visa and come back to Mexico. You can stay in Mexico for 180 days on a tourist visa. Then you just have to leave the country and come back. You can be gone for a few days you can come back to Mexico so that's what I'm gonna do now I could have chosen to get um, like four-year visa but uh, I don't know I don't think I'm ready to settle down and live in Mexico actually I'm not ready So we have to find the bus station and take the bus over to Cancun, to the international airport in Cancun. I actually don't know what time the bus is leaving, so I'm just on my way over there to see what we can find. So the bus station is just around the corner here now. I paid 200 pesos or 10 US dollars for the bus that would take me straight into the Cancun airport about one hour further up north along the coast. I had been hanging out in the east part of Mexico for a while by the Caribbean Sea and the coast of the state of Quintana Roo. The weather had been quite humid and you always get a bit sweaty when you go somewhere outside. I was excited to head out again for a new little adventure. I finally had arrived in Cancun. Hello everybody, I'm here at Terminal 2 in Cancun. It's an international airport and I have a flight over to Medellin in Colombia. A three hour direct flight. This airport here in Cancun is actually really good if you look at the location. Uh, because it's at the end of the Yucatan Peninsula here in Mexico and you have direct flights to a lot of different direct, uh, a lot of different uh, places in uh, Europe. For example Madrid in Spain. Brussels in Belgium, uh, also direct flight to uh, Moscow, all the way over in Russia. So uh, it's uh, really good uh, if you look at it from uh, that perspective. You can get around the world really easily from here. Also a bunch of flights around in South America and to the other side, even to uh, Australia. So I'm gonna head into the airport now. I'm gonna put this big camera in my bag and use my GoPro instead because it's much easier to film with this. So. I'll see you inside. Uh, so I've been here actually at this airport many times before. Uh, it's a bit hectic sometimes. A lot of uh, people wanna take you in their taxi. We have to actually have to check in this time. I wasn't able to get my boarding pass uh, to my phone like I usually get. So I have to check in, unfortunately. We just have to 
see where we're gonna check in. So I just had some really strange thing happening. I was about to check in and um, this is the Mexican uh, tourist visa that you get. This lady is asking me to go to the immigration office because the visa or like the paper is a little bit scratched up here. Uh, even though you can still see everything, you see it's basically intact, you know, because they just put it in your passport, this little page, usually when you get to Mexico. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, it might take forever to go over there now. You get a piece of paper every time you land in Mexico, and that is your tourist visa that is valid for 180 days. If it gets a little bit scratched, or if you lose it altogether, you can have some trouble apparently. So I was in the immigration office and I got a piece of that. Man, huh. I've watched so many of your videos. Dude. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Hey, man, my name's Daniel. William. Hey, good stuff, William. Yeah, so um, they put a piece of uh, tape now. <laughs> Not uh, on the top where the lady complained. She complained about the top, but they put a piece of tape on the bottom now. But it doesn't make sense because it's just a piece of paper and they put it inside your passport. Uh, after six months, of course, it's going to be a bit worn out. So we're gonna go back and speak to the lady now. The one that said I had to go to the immigration office. There is always a scale when you check in. And it's the only place where they can ask to weigh your luggage. That's why I always try to avoid checking in. And instead get my boarding passes straight to my phone. So this was the weirdest thing actually. It's the first time ever. But I had to pay to check in. <laughs> I had to pay to check into the flight. There was no option to check in online. So when I came to the counter over there, he said, um, you have to pay 230 pesos it's not much like ten dollars but still like i've never had to pay ever before to check in and just get my uh boarding card all these different flight companies have uh, different different things going on sometimes they can just uh, charge for like strange fees it was quite hectic in the airport and i had to fill out some papers regarding covid 19. a lot of people didn't know what to do or how to fill them out it took a while, but finally I had almost arrived to the gate where I would be leaving to Colombia. So I came through the security without any trouble. So you actually don't need anything to go to Colombia. You can just uh, fly straight in. You get 90 days when you land. All you have to do is uh, be able to show that you have a flight going out of the country. Uh, that's pretty much it. Hello! Oh, I had some Panda Express. So good. And also a Pepsi. There was no Coca Cola. So I had to get a Pepsi. I have to put on my jacket. It's so cold here in the airport. I think this is the only place in Mexico where they have AC. <laughs> they never have it on anywhere else. I've heard uh, uh, that electricity is really expensive in Mexico, so... I sat down and I had booked a hotel from Booking.com. Also put a bookmark in the city of Medellin, where the hotel was located. The name was Hotel 47. I'm on my way to the boarding to Medellin. <laughs> Yeah. 27 27A is my seat. I made it now. I had three seats to myself and nobody was close to me. We took off and I could see the famous hotel zone in Cancun where I had previously spent a lot of time. Along with the famous island of Isla Mujeres, the end of the hotel zone is probably the most incredible place you can see in Mexico. I enjoyed the three seats for myself, and it was a direct flight into Medellin in Colombia. We had passed by Honduras, Nicaragua, Costa Rica, and Panama. You also had the Caribbean Sea and the Pacific Ocean on both sides of the country. I saw a lot of big mountains on the way in, and the landscape was really green. 
I had fallen asleep almost the whole time, and finally we had landed in Medellin, Colombia. I immediately opened my offline maps again to see where I was going. Alright, I'm here in Medellin. <laughs> now we're gonna take a bus, I think, into downtown. So here is the line uh, for people from Colombia, <laughs> packed, and here is the line for people not from Colombia, and there is only one person here. <laughs> I was the only foreigner on the flight coming in. So I came through the immigration, they just looked at my passport like 15 seconds and then they just let me come in. So I'm here at the ATM, I'm gonna try to get some cash so I can pay for probably a bus ride into downtown. I would guess they only take cash probably. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I got 400,000 Colombian pesos, which is around 100 US dollars. I got onto one of the buses that would take me into the downtown area. As always, I brought up my phone to follow along on my offline maps to make sure the bus was going the right way. Sometimes the bus might take a different route and you end up getting lost. There were a lot of mountains along the way, so we had to go through several tunnels. But eventually the landscape opened up and I could see the huge city of Medellin. It had been about 45 minutes and I had almost arrived to the downtown area. I paid 13,000 pesos for the ride, which is about $3.50. San Diego. Gracias. 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 The city is massive, with almost 4 million people, including the metropolitan area. So uh, I, got, I got out on the street here, uh, I was checking on my map and uh, the bus stop is pretty close to the hotel that I booked for tonight. But it looks like everybody's wearing masks here, even outside. So uh, I think I'm probably gonna have to wear the mask outside. In Mexico where I came from, uh, there was actually much more freedom there. No requirements to wear masks. So I have about a one mile walk this way to the hotel. I saved the hotel in my maps, in my offline maps, because I don't have a SIM card. Usually when I get to a new place, uh, if I'm gonna stay for a while, I get a SIM card right away. But I'm not gonna be here for so long, uh, so I'm not gonna get a SIM card. Uh, but that's really good then to have my offline maps. Maps me. It has made traveling so much easier for me. Tom hometown of Pablo Escobar, one of the biggest drug lords uh, ever. He was from here, Medellin. And there was a guy, when I passed him over there, he was uh, yelling, money, money. They wanted me to give him money, but I didn't want to do that. I like actually that I can go to a new place in the world and not freak out. Uh, I just know exactly what to do, usually. So I never freak out when I get to a new place. Like anywhere in the world, which is nice. We're gonna take a little detour here into uh, some more shitty parts, I think. We have some barbed wire here. <laughs> Blocking off the building, look. Now I'm a bit out of the uh, hysterical street over here. Looks a bit more calm here. I'm getting a bit hungry. I might try to buy some food actually. Some Colombian food. I wonder what kind of food they have here. I walked around a bit in the neighborhood and a lot of the streets were quite dirty.
This city is massive. Cars everywhere. <laughs> and people coming here. <laughs> Let's see. I think I'm uh, going over here. I'm not sure actually. Um, yeah. Here it seems to be a little party on the other side. Look. They were playing poker here on the street, <laughs> on the side of the road. I found a hotel right in the downtown area of Medellin. Hotel 47. Hola, um, yo tengo una reservación por uh, dos noches. Okay. Suecia. Sí. Mucha historia. Okay. Sí. <laughs> Hello, I'm here. Hello. Hello. So uh, it's right in the middle of downtown Medellin. A little. Uh, it's pretty nice actually. A bed. And here we have uh, the bathroom. Is also pretty modern. The shower is in here. Pretty nice shower. What the shower? <laughs> The water comes from the from the ceiling. All right, my friends, I have arrived in Medellin, and uh, of course we have to try the bed here and also give it a rating, a bed rating. See how good the bounce is, how much noise the bed makes, and also how soft it is. Pretty soft, but the, there's some kind of plastic underneath. Soft, decent bounce, and no, no noise. Sometimes there's springs, <laughs> but uh, ah, the bounce was not great. The softness was not great either. So I think three stars out of five for this bed. So I paid a total of hundred and thirty-six thousand. Costa Rican uh, pesos that's um, let's see what is it that's 36 US dollars actually that's pretty cheap 36 US dollars uh, yeah so 18 US dollars per night it's pretty modern here much cheaper than Mexico actually when I traveled all around in Mexico I never got anything that was this modern for uh, 18 dollars per night actually only in uh, the state of Oaxaca and the uh, city of Huatulco. I stayed there for $17 per night in the place. The bed was also really bouncy there when I was in Huatulco. Uh, but the hotel was not nearly as nice as this. So I have concluded that it's cheaper probably in um, Colombia than Mexico. So I'm gonna bring my GoPro instead because this camera here is huge. It's just like really big when I go with this on the street. Hello, hello. There's a bunch of birds right outside here. There is the bird. Oh, we're on the street again, looking for some food here. There are a bunch of um, people selling fruit there. Look, so much fruit everywhere. And uh, yeah, many people, so much going on. I'm trying to see if I can find a spot where I can fly my drone out uh, Almost 4 million people here, in the, including the metro area. So packed with people, buildings everywhere. And uh, it was also really cool. I saw all the mountains when I came in on the bus. Uh, one thing uh, you should do if you are traveling, you go to a new place and you don't have a SIM card or mobile data, Wi-Fi um, save a bookmark of where you live of the hotel before you go out so you don't get lost I did it a while back I never saved my uh, bookmark of where I live and uh, I got lost one time I couldn't find my way back but now I know
here there is a um, tram also in the middle of the city, look. Walked around for like 10-15 minutes, I haven't seen a single restaurant. Only a bunch of places that sell bread. A bunch of bread everywhere, I don't know why. Here is the bread. Hola, um, yo quiero um, comida tradicional de Colombia. Chicharrón. But, uh, Sin huevo, sin huevo. Oh, I got some kind of um, apple water here. Agua de manzana. Here comes the food. Oh. ¿Qué es esto? Eh, carne. Chicharrón. Chicharrón. Okay. Uh -huh. okay, gracias. So I got the food here now. Um, some kind of uh, <laughs> meat. All the meat is full of fat. It's a bunch of fat and meat and beans. Rice salad, I think fried banana also, and an egg. Se ve bueno, se ve bueno. Oh, muy bien, muy bien. That's it. So apparently, it's served cold. Everything is cold. The rice is cold. <laughs> the beans are cold. The meat is cold. The egg is cold. Everything is cold, but it tastes pretty good. The meat is actually really good. Um, tastes kind of like bacon, but it looks a bit scary. Hola, eh, yo quiero pagar. Gracias. Está muy rica comida. Gracias. Gracias. ¿Cuánto cuesta una manzana? Mil pesito. Mil pesito. Cool, amigo. Okay. Gracias. All right, I'm going to try to find my way home now. Um, I usually actually do speak to people a bit, but I uh, haven't been filming that. But uh, apparently it's good to do. I've seen a lot of other YouTubers just walk around and speak to people. But I actually uh, don't enjoy just like filming people when I walk around. It's not so nice, I think, because they can see that you have the camera filming them, even though the camera is really small. So I don't like it. It's kind of awkward to film the people that you meet, even though it's uh, good content. A lot of the streets were quite dark and not much lighting. Here we have the bread. Always selling a bunch of bread. Look. Here, more bread. Fried bread. Fried bread. Fried bread and bread everywhere. And also holes in the ground. Look. <laughs> back in the hotel but I do actually speak to people I just don't film it very much because I don't think it's polite like I said to film strangers when you just meet them you go to a restaurant they can see that you have the camera because the camera there's a display in the camera look you can see and it's also blinking even though this GoPro is very um, like very small you can still see, see that they're filming oh shit we're going down like <laughs> no Guess what it's time for now? A shower! The water is gonna come from the ceiling. <laughs> Look, that's the shower right there. So come along with me! So come along with me! And your pain will be eased! Oh! Oh! Cold! Oh! You have to stand up to get the good pressure here, look, 
Here is the good pressure. <laughs> Over here, you have to stand up a bit. Oh. I've been working out actually when I was in uh, um, Tyler Carmen. I got a bit bigger, bigger arms and uh, better shape. I took a shower and uh, this video is coming closer to an end, my friends. I do need a haircut, maybe we can cut the hair here. Oh, oh we're gonna cut the hair now. Oh. All right, this is the end of the video now, my friends. Um, also, if you wanna see another video, you can click this one that should come up here should also be a great success video and also don't forget to click the red subscribe button below this video so you can subscribe my goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers so if you want to help me out all you have to do is click the red subscribe button below this video so I can get to 100,000 and I really appreciate it if you do that to help me out uh, I would like to say a big big thank you if you do click the red subscribe button below this video <laughs> but see you next time my friends